We're going to do a few more factoring examples. Here we've introduced other letters. So again, it's sort of in standard form. No common factor. So here our A term is just one. So this will be a T and a T. And here a good idea is put the S and the S there. Now our factors of 6, one's negative, one's positive, so I'm going to need a 6 and a 1 here. And what will my 6 sign be? Middle term is positive, so the 6 needs to be positive, and this one's negative. Okay. Standard form, no common factors, H and H, S and S. And again, I have a 9 and a 1. 9 times 1 is 9, but our inners and outers, so that it adds up to a negative 10, both of these need to be negative. All right, continuing. Now, if you recognize this one, this is a good uh, shortcut. This is a perfect square, and this is a perfect square. And it's the difference. So this will factor into its conjugates. Let me give you a moment. 7x plus 10y, 7x minus 10y. And for number 4, as we look at it, what can we take out of each term? Well, a 4 out of there, 12, no, 12 won't go out of there. So if this was 36, it would be a little easier. So I think the most we can take out is a 2. And for our letters, we can take a Y out of each one. And then now watch the signs. This will be 12X squared plus 17XY uh, plus 6. So, two sets of parentheses, and I'm going to pause while I work on that myself. Now, I had to fiddle with this for a while, uh, with a 17 in the middle. This could have been a 12 and a 1, which I threw out. A 6 and a 2 I tried, it didn't work. So I went to a 4 and a 3, and then a 3 and a 2 for the 6. So this is a 9, this is an 8, and now it adds up to a 17, and there is example 4. Okay, it's in standard form. So two sets of parentheses, and I know this is going to be a 2G and a G. There's no other possibilities for that one. But here I can have a 5 and a 3. Yes, a 5 and a 3 will do well here. I need to stick a K in there too. Okay, so that uh, this is a 10, this is a 3. I need a positive in the middle, so my 5 will be positive for a positive 10. And a negative 3 kg gives me a 7 uh, gk. All right, that looks good. Going on to page 36 now, we're going to review a little bit of exponents. Here we're going to subtract our exponents as it crosses the division bar. So this becomes 3 to the second as I subtract the 2 from the 4, 
and this will become a 9. Now here we're raising each of these. So this is going to be 3 to the third power, m to the third power. But they want us to simplify. 3 to the third is 27 m to the third and that's what they want here. I see they had a little difficulty writing this but that's okay. So this becomes 5 to the fourth over y to the fourth and 5 to the fourth is 625 over y to the fourth. Remember each of these are to the fourth power. Okay, so we take care of this first. This will be 2 to the second because there's a 1 there and then this is going to be h to the fourth and this is going to be times 3 to the third h to the ninth because we're multiplying. When we raise powers to a power, so this is 4, h to the fourth, this is 27, h to the ninth. So 4 times 27 is 108 h to the 13th. All right, that's good. So we would have covered this in class, but just a quick review. Here we're dealing with what are called fractional exponents or exponential fractions. Now this is very close to another way of writing it and that is in what we call radical form, which is radical notation. This is the radical sign. And this notch is where we put the root that we want to take this uh, radicant that gets under it. So the way it works out is if we had, let's say, 144 uh, a over B, that was our fraction. Well, the B goes as our index number in our radical notation. The 1 stays there as the exponent of our base, which now becomes the radicant and we don't write the one. And we also don't write a two if it's a two there. If there's nothing written there, we assume it's a two. So 144 to the one half exponent, a fractional exponent, we say the one half power is 12. We're taking the square root of 144. So here we're going to take this square root of 75. Now use radical notation to rewrite the expression and simplify if possible. Now in our lesson we said that if we have a radicand and we want to simplify it in this form we can separate it into two radical expressions. And under the first radical sign, we want to put the largest perfect square we can get out of 75. Well, if we divide 75 by 3, we get 25, which is a large perfect square, and we end up with a 3 here. So 25 times 3 would give you 75. But in simplifying this, we now say what's the square root of 25 is 
5 the square root of 3 and that's our answer. So rewriting this this would become again it's 64 to the 1 6 power if we put it in its radical form the 6 is our index number so it's the 6 root of 64 and then raised to the first power that we don't write and this happens to be a perfect 6 uh, 2 to the 6th power is 64 I happen to know that one now by the way if you're using your calculator you go 64 carat and then in parentheses you put 1 6 that is raise that to the 1 6 power it's going to give you 2 you should try it out okay now this one is a negative and then it's going to be the third root of 125 and it's to the this is how we do it we put our exponent now up here so again I don't like the way they write it I like it when they write it this way so this is our index number we put it under the radical sign now notice the base is just the 125 it's not the negative if it were in parentheses it would include the negative but it doesn't here so we have a negative uh, cube root of 125 is a perfect cube which is 5 to the fourth so 5 to the 4th, you recall, is 625. And now we apply the negative sign. So a little bit of technique and uh, using this converting fractional exponents to its radical form. Very useful. Now, one of the other techniques we have is when we have a negative exponent here we can just flip this and this becomes 64 over 27 and now this is a positive two-thirds so we can take the index number is 3 and we're going to raise that now to the second power. So when we do this, this is a perfect cube. This is going to be 4. Uh, 4 to the third power is 64. This is 3. 3 to the third power is 27. And now we're going to raise that to the second power. So this becomes 4 squared is 16, 3 squared is 9. Now, again, a good technique, if you have a negative exponent of a fraction, just flip it, take its reciprocal, and then this exponent becomes positive. It's a little easier to work with that way. Okay, this is page 38 already. And we're going to work with exponents again. The 7 crosses division bar becomes positive. I'm sorry, positive to negative. So this is going to be 8 to the 4th power, which is 4,096. And this will be 3 to the 3rd over n to the 3rd. So this is going to be 27 over n to the 3rd. Okay, let's go on. Ah, this looks a little more challenging here. Let's see what we have. 
So fortunately, as we deal with exponents, the rules of multiplication apply. So here we have a negative 2 to the second. So we're going to multiply and get 3 to the negative 4. Here we get k to the negative 16. And then negative 5 times 2 is k to the negative 10. Now we only want positive exponents. So I'm going to bring this. I need a 1 up there in the numerator to keep that as a numerator. I'm going to bring this down. This becomes 3 to the 4th in our denominator here. And 3 to the 4th is 81. So this negative 4, when it gets down to the denominator, becomes 3 to the positive 4, crossing this division bar. And when I take this negative 16 down, it becomes a positive 16. So a negative 10 and a positive 16 gives me k to the 6th power. OK. Perform the indicated operation. Simplify your answer only with positive exponents. OK. Now here, let me write this out. 8x to the square root of xy over x squared y. Well, I could write this x squared just to show you what's going on here as xx. So there you see we could cancel out one of the x's there. This goes. So then we're just left with Well, they have a different answer in the book here as I look at that. But here, this is, I think, as far as you can go. And uh, now, if they wanted us to rationalize the numerator, but they're not saying that here. So I'll just leave it like this. If they did rationalize the numerator, you would multiply this by the square root of xy and multiply the denominator by the square root of xy. Now, this would then become an xy on the top, and then these would cancel out. And what they're showing in the book is 8 over the square root of xy, but they didn't ask us to rationalize the numerator here. So maybe that's coming up. Now as we do this one again, we're working with a negative exponent here and the rules operate. So a negative 7 times a negative 1 makes this f to the positive 7. Now this is l in the numerator to the negative 8 that I'm going to bring down to the denominator as a positive 8. And this is s to the negative 3 that I'll bring down to the denominator as a positive 3. And that's the answer they have in our book. OK, we are at 18, 19 minutes, so we'll pause here and continue in another video.